Dude RV. I sure appreciate you stopping by. If this is your first visit to Dude RV, I would really appreciate you considering clicking on the subscribe button and tapping that bell as well. Hey, I'm wandering around the great state of Texas. I enjoy exploring Texas history uh, while I'm also exploring Texas parks. And so today, we are in San Felipe, the first town founded by Stephen F. Austin. This was the colonial capital of Texas, 1823 to 1836. And this is a very small, small community, not a real big community. Go up here and check this out. We're headed over to the uh, state historical site, but they had this building here for us to check out. Now you can tell that people back in the, the time that this was built were a little bit shorter than I am. I'd whack my head every time I walked in there. All right, let's go to the state historical site and see some stuff. Here we are. The state historical site, the Stephen F. Austin, San Felipe de Aus Stephen F. Austin state historical site. We're gonna go see what there is to see here at the historical site. I don't, we'll find out if it's video worthy. We've, we've gained admission. There is, a, there is a fee for touring the museum for the grounds outside, not so much. So check this out. You can't really see it because of the, the, the glare, but they've, the concrete is engraved. So this is an ex a temporary exhibit about the German settlers in Texas. So if you have any German descent in, and you are from Texas, not much of an exhibit. It's kind of a little bit of an overview. So we've been to Goliad. And we're gonna visit, hopefully visit Brazoria on this journey. And these are on the Independence Trail. So the old 300, that is the, the f core of Austin's colony, 300 land grants. So the Spain originally held the territory and Stephen F. Austin's father, Moses, had negotiated with Spain to settle what was then Texas, but Mexico uh, revolted from Spain. We don't know why they named it San Philip. I'll have to ask the curator. Hmm. You can get a whole lot of land, man. <laughs> So you could get a, a labor, which was 177, and a league, which was 4,000. That's a lot of land. A compass, a chain, and a sight. Well, they used an ax to blaze it. Hmm. Of course, all the homes were rough hewn out of the most common wood, which was juniper, eastern red cedar. 
which for those of us who live in Texas know that will really make your nose run and eyes water in the winter. Do we miss anything over here? Ranching in Spanish towns. So there's a, a team of amateur archaeologists doing a dig today, so we're going to be going to check that out after I finish exploring in here. So the very first newspaper in the state of Texas, or in the, in the area, was the Texas Gazette. And that's an example of the printing press used. Oh, now that's cool. I don't know how well this is going to come out, but I think, oh, how neat is that? Cooper Townsend Store. Now, how neat is that? Paid $257. So the carpenter was paid $257 to build the first frame building in town. It's more difficult to build than a log cabin. Cooper, who was known by the nickname of Sawmill Cooper, may have cut the lumber himself at a nearby pit saw. How cool is that? So, billiards hall. So they had a billiard table. This is this is really neat. You gotta come see. <laughs> that's that's just that's that's just so cool. You just gotta come see that. All right. So this these panels we're talking about uh, the timeline that from. 1828 to 1835 and Texas winning its independence from Mexico and one of the the things that I find to be uh, really interesting was the, the okay so in 1830 the law of April 6 passed and that put restrictions on immigration trade and slavery combined with the construction of military posts in Texas by by Mexico in 1831 they started, Mexico started building garrisons, military garrisons, to prevent smuggling and illegal immigration. <laughs> so so it, was, it was flowing the other way in the 1800s. So, so the biggest turning point, the reason that all of this happened was Mexico dissolved the Constitution. The Mexican Constitution outlined the Federal Republic, a union of empowered states. A growing centralist movement in the Mexican capital instead pushed to consolidate power over issues like immigration, slavery, and taxes. So they wanted to uh, tighten the rope, tighten the noose on the independent states and make it all one central authoritarian government. To keep the town out of the hands of Mexico, they burned it. Burned it to the ground. It's interesting. The land that was once Austin's colony is now home to more than five million Texans. So the upper Madison County was as far north as that went. Apparently there's looters stealing from the state. All right, so we're gonna go look at the big display outside now.
So this is how the town was initially envisioned. And the parcels laid out. A lot of glare. Huh. All right, so I'm gonna go get a little red. And we're gonna go explore the grounds. All right, so I got a little red. We're gonna go over here and check out the, the monument. We're very lucky in that they have ADA friendly trails. So this is where the print shop was, and this is where the Travis Law Offices were located. Austin and Perry stores. So being uh, an impresario, impresario uh, proved to be financially disappointing to Austin. So he started a store. Blue bonnets are coming out. Square. I chose this place because it was a, a good steamboat port location. So we're fortunate today, and, and I was informed that this this doesn't happen a whole lot but today there's actually a team of there's a team of archaeologists digging today apparently this is is not a everyday occurrence Hello. We're doing an archaeology dig here today. Yes, ma'am. They inform me inside. So you feel free to. Uh, this is a uh, homestead. They know who lived here, and so we're finding everything from glass and ceramic and you know metal. Um, we're volunteers, but we work out here routinely with Sarah, and then we have some students learning today. So uh, feel free to walk around or, you know, and ask people questions. Okay. Um, in Texas, volunteers that are trained work with um, professionals all the time. We're one of the few states that allow people to do that. So I've been doing this as a volunteer for 20 plus years. Cool. But all right. To, to recap and summarize what she was telling me, the, there's a group of volunteer archaeologists that, that help the professional archaeologists and things of this nature. Texas is a big, big place, and there's a lot of, lot of archaeological sites. Spanish town. So the archaeological work is what has, this is a reconstruction of some of the buildings in the town. And those reconstructions are based on what is found when they're doing the archaeological digs as we, similar to what we just saw.
<laughs> we're gonna run across the street this is we're now at the the original state historic site where we were was apparently the the new rendition the, the new development and this just talks about the history of san felipe de austin so that's the one of the original wells Talks about the burning. Can you imagine how miserable and hot it must have been living in a timber structure like this? But it would sure beat weathering out a Texas thunderstorm without any shelter over your head. The J.J. Josie General Store. Oop, this is the last store in San Felipe. Built in 1847 after the town was burned and it was moved twice. And it was continually operated until 1942. They had a good run for a store to commemorate San Felipe de Austin, however you pronounce it, to commemorate the little town that Stephen F. Austin founded. They put this, mo this monument up in the 70s. Blue bonnets are really pretty. <laughs> Stephen F. Austin, the founder of one of many Texas. Hey, if this is your first visit to Dude RV and you enjoyed uh, my little tour through this historic, significant historic site in Texas history, uh, please consider subscribing. And for those of you who have been following along, and most especially my patrons, thank you. Thank you so very much. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, to, to share this, this fantastic history and beautiful places, beautiful places with you. Thank you. Y'all come back now, you hear?